Chapter 34 Echoes of Vengeance The journey back to the Crinus Cluster was heavy with the weight of victory and loss. Rook's ship, now a vessel carrying the survivors of his team and the newly converted Space Lords, moved silently through space, a stark contrast to the fiery battles that had raged within it. As the ship docked, Nakia, who had been coordinating other assaults, made her way over to welcome Rook and his team back. She was eager to hear of their success and to reunite with her fellow Space Lords. The anticipation of a celebratory reunion was great as she entered Rook's ship. However, as the doors to the deportation area slid open, Nakia was met with a sight that stopped her in her tracks. There, in the center of the room, was a macabre display of Drexarian heads, each one severed and arranged in a chilling pile. The sight was a grotesque testament to the brutal retribution Rook and his team had exacted. Stunned, Nakia struggled to process the scene before her. Her eyes searched for Rook, needing answers, needing to understand what had driven him to such an extreme act. She found him standing near the pile, his expression one of grim satisfaction. Rook! What has happened here? Nakia's voice sounded with shock and disbelief. Rook turned to face her, his eyes reflecting a darkness that Nakia had never seen before. This is the price the Draxarians must pay, he said, his voice cold and resolute. They took everything from us. They showed us no mercy. This is what they deserve. Nakaya, her heart sinking, approached Rook cautiously. But this, this is not who we are. We fight for freedom, for justice, not for revenge. Rook's gaze remained unyielding. Justice. There is no justice in what they did to us, to Stacy, to all those we've lost. This is the only language they understand. This is the only way to make them feel our pain. Nakia could see the depth of Rook's anguish, the transformation wrought by grief and the horrors of war. She reached out, placing a hand on his shoulder. Rook, this path of vengeance, it will consume us. We can't become like them. We must hold on to our humanity. Rook looked at Nakia, the hardness in his eyes softening momentarily. Humanity? They stripped that from us the moment they forced us into this war. This is who we are now. This is what we must do to survive. To win. The conversation cut swiftly through the air, a stark reminder of the toll the war had taken on them all. The pile of Drixarian heads, a symbol of Rook's descent into vengeance, stood as a grim marker of the psychological scars the Space Lords bore. Nakia, realizing the extent of Rook's transformation, and the danger it posed to their cause, knew that she had to find a way to bring him back from the brink. But as she looked into Rook's eyes, she wondered if the man she once knew was still there, or if the war had changed him irrevocably. Rook, his gaze shifting away from Nakia and the grim testament to his wrath, addressed the remnants of his team. Are we ready to continue our mission? He asked, his voice carrying a sense of power and urgency. The Drexarians won't stop. Neither will we. He raised his sword, a symbol of their fight, and called out a battle cry that had become their rallying call. For the fallen, we strike. The space lords around him responded, their voices uniting in the cry, a chorus of defiance and solidarity. They were ready to follow Rook into the fray once more, their resolve hardened by the battles they had endured and the losses they had suffered. Nakia, witnessing this exchange, stepped forward, her voice laced with concern. Rook, please reconsider. The Drexarians are expecting us now. They're prepared for our tactics. We need to regroup and plan, not rush into another assault. Rook turned to face Nakia, his expression unyielding. We can't afford to wait. Every moment we hesitate, they slaughter more conscripts. We must keep the pressure on. Hit them where it hurts. He then addressed the newly freed Space Lords. I need a hundred volunteers to join our next assault. Who will stand with us? The response was overwhelming. Thousands of newly transformed Space Lords stepped forward, eager to join the fight, 
to exact their own measure of vengeance against their former oppressors. Their eagerness was not just born out of a desire for liberation, but also from a deep-seated need to retaliate for the injustices they had suffered. Rook, looking out over the sea of volunteers, nodded in approval. First hundred, fall in with the team. We're moving out. He then turned back to Nakia, his eyes conveying a sense of grim certainty. They may be ready for us, but they're not ready for what we're going to do to them. Nakia watched as Rook and his expanded team prepared to depart for another assault. Her heart was heavy with worry, not just for their safety, but for the path they were on. She understood the need to fight, to resist the Draxarians, but she feared the cost of this unrelenting pursuit of vengeance. As Rook and his team left the ship, Nakia was left to ponder the future of their rebellion. The line between justice and vengeance was blurring, and she wondered if they were losing sight of what they were truly fighting for. The Space Lords had become a formidable force, but at what cost to their humanity, to their original mission? In the ensuing weeks, Rook's relentless campaign against the Drexarians intensified. His strategy became a brutal cycle. Assault Drexarian ships, conquer them, return with the spoils, and then quickly replenish his ranks with newly converted Space Lords, replacing those lost in the fierce battles. The throne room portal had turned into a revolving door of war, a gateway to continuous vengeful engagements. Each return of Rook's fleet was less a triumphant homecoming and more a grim reminder of the ongoing, ruthless conflict. He brought back not just the captured Drixarian ships, but also tales of fierce battles and heavy losses. The Space Lords, once symbols of hope and liberation, were now enmeshed in a never-ending cycle of slaughter and conquest. Nakia, watching this unfold, grew increasingly concerned about the direction their rebellion was taking. The focus had shifted from fighting for freedom to a relentless pursuit of vengeance, a path that seemed to only spiral further into darkness. Her concerns deepened when Korra, once an example of strategic resistance, appeared to be drawn into Rook's vengeful mindset. Nakia approached her, seeking to understand the change. Korra, what's happening? This endless cycle of attacks. It's not why we started this fight. Korra's expression was one of weariness. I know, Nakia, but the situation has changed. The Draxarians have started terminating conscripts en masse since our rebellion began. They're not just our enemy anymore. They're committing genocide against their own forced soldiers. The revelation was chilling, and it shed light on the dire reality of their struggle. The Drixarians, in a desperate bid to maintain control, were executing thousands of conscripts, viewing them as potential threats or liabilities. Nakia felt a sense of despair. But this... Rook's methods... It's just perpetuating a cycle of violence... Aren't we losing ourselves in this quest for revenge? Cora sighed, her gaze distant. Perhaps. But what choice do we have? We can't let the Druxarians continue their reign of terror. We have to fight back, even if it means becoming like them. The conversation left Nakia unsettled. The lines between right and wrong, justice and vengeance, were becoming increasingly blurred. The Space Lord's rebellion, once a clear fight against tyranny, was now mired in moral ambiguity. As Rook prepared for yet another assault, Nakia watched with a heavy heart. The man she once knew, driven by a noble cause, seemed to be consumed by a darker purpose. The rebellion was evolving into something unrecognizable, a war not just against the Draxarians, but against the very principles they had set out to uphold. The cycle of vengeance continued, with each battle won at a great cost. The Space Lords, once heralded as liberators, were now caught in a relentless pursuit of revenge, a path that threatened to consume them and their mission. Nakia knew that something had to change, that they needed to find their way back to their original purpose. But as she watched Rook lead his team once more through the portal, she wondered if it was already too late if the cycle of vengeance had already taken its toll. Months had passed in the relentless campaign against the Draxarians, marked by a continuous cycle of battles and bloodshed. A 
Upon their return from a time-distorted galaxy, Spartan Commander Leonix, Roman Commander Varro, and Lysander immediately sensed the shift in the atmosphere. They convened with Korra for a briefing on the current state of affairs, eager to understand the changes and dive back into the fray. In the command center of a recently captured Draxarian vessel, Korra briefed them on the grim reality. The situation has escalated rapidly, she began, her voice reflecting the weight of recent events. Rook has intensified his campaign, focusing on retribution. Meanwhile, the Drexarians are executing conscripts en masse to prevent them from joining our ranks. Lysander, his eyes alight with a warrior's resolve, responded firmly. Then we have no time to lose. Our priority must be to save these conscripts. Every life we save is a blow against the Drexarians. Commander Leonix, fueled by a sense of duty, added, We've trained for this. Our experience in Spartan warfare can turn the tide in these rescue missions. Let's put it to good use. Varro, ever the tactician, nodded in agreement. Cora, lead us to where we're needed most. Our Roman discipline will ensure we execute these missions with precision. The more conscripts we save, the stronger our fight against the Drexarians. Cora, heartened by their eagerness to rejoin the battle, outlined their next operation. Our intelligence has identified several Drexarian ships where conscripts are still alive. We strike fast, free them, and disrupt the enemy's plans. The conversation invigorated the group. They were united in their purpose, to save lives and weaken the Drexarian grip over many systems of multiple galaxies. The commanders, with their unique skills and battle-hardened prowess, were essential to this mission. As they prepared to depart, Lysander rallied his fellow commanders. Let's remind the Drixarians why they should fear the Space Lords. We fight not just with strength, but with honor and purpose. For every conscript we save, we restore hope to the galaxy. With a renewed sense of purpose, the commanders and Korra coordinated their teams for the upcoming missions. The newly returned commanders, alongside Korra, set out to rejoin the fight, their focus clear. Rescue as many conscripts as possible and bring them into the fold of the Space Lords. Their actions would not only save lives but also bolster the morale and ranks of their forces, proving that their rebellion was about more than just defeating the Draxarians. It was about saving and changing lives for the better.